As insects disperse within and between habitats, they access resources over a greater geographical range to reduce competition within their environment. Dispersal also allows insects to escape from predators and unfavorable conditions, and potentially avoid local extinction. Insects can travel either by passive or active dispersal. Passive dispersal is movement assisted by external sources, such as wind, water, or other living organisms. Passive dispersal can also occur on human-made structures, such as boats, airplanes, and cars. Human-assisted passive dispersal has resulted in the introduction of many invasive species into non-native habitats. Invasive species are non-native organisms that can threaten local ecosystems, biodiversity, and sometimes even public health. We will discuss them in more detail later in the video. There are several advantages to passive dispersal. Passive dispersal typically requires less energetic investment by the insect than active dispersal so that the insect can travel long distances with little effort. If passive dispersal occurs during the insect's larval stage, it can also increase the insect's window of opportunity for dispersal. This is because passive dispersal tends to work best when the organism is physically small. However, passive dispersal does come with limitations. For instance, insects that disperse passively have little control over their final destination and may not survive the journey. To balance out these high mortality rates, insects that disperse passively often have extremely high reproductive rates. The wind is often used by insects in passive dispersal. In several insect species, tiny, newly hatched larvae disperse using wind and many of them have adaptations that help to capture wind currents, such as long hairs or silken threads. Small adult insects can also disperse passively, especially when strong gusts of wind carry them away from their original habitat. If they have wings, they are usually able to make small corrections to the flight paths using active flight. Adults of small insects, such as aphids, thrips, and midges, often disperse passively. Foracy is another mode of passive dispersal employed by some insects. It's a symbiotic relationship in which one organism is transported by another larger individual of a different species. This relationship allows the organism being carried to travel to new habitats where they can access new resources. The larger individual, the transporter, doesn't usually benefit from this interaction. Many insects use foracy for dispersal. For example, some species of beetle larvae in the family Meloidae are known to gather on vegetation, where they release chemical signals to bees that serve as their phoretic host. These larvae then climb onto the bee and hitch a ride back to the bee colony, where they feed and complete their development. Some very small insects are even phoretic as adults, such as the tiny flies in the family Spheroceridae. These flies congregate on the bodies of scarab beetles that carry the flies to dung patches, where both flies and beetles rear and feed their young. As we mentioned earlier, human activities such as trade and tourism can sometimes help the spread of invasive species into new habitats by aiding the passive dispersal of insects. Globalization and trade, in particular, have assisted the movement of several invasive forest pests into North America, including the Asian longhorned beetle and the emerald ash borer. These insects are often introduced into a region when they hitchhike in transported goods, such as packing material, wood, plant nursery stocks, as well as other commodities. Invasive insects can be transported to new areas in or on human vehicles, like cars, trucks, trains, planes, and even ships. Movement of these contaminated vehicles contributes to range expansion by invasive pests. In the meantime, as millions of tourists cross international borders every year, travelers may unintentionally transport insects that can have profound effects on agriculture, forestry, and public health. Active dispersal occurs when an organism moves itself and is the norm for most insects. Active dispersal increases the probability of successfully finding a suitable habitat 
as the insect's movement isn't dependent on chance, as it is with passive dispersal. Active dispersal in insects requires not only efficient locomotory appendages, but also specialized sensory and neuromuscular systems that allow the organism to position itself in space and recognize favorable habitats. We will discuss the neuromuscular aspect of insect locomotion later in the module. The primary objective of this module is to focus on the most common modes of insect locomotion and explore how the various adaptations of insect legs and wings have made such movement possible. Although walking, jumping, and flying are most common, some insects have evolved their own unique modes of locomotion. Let's take a look at some of these oddities first. Even if you didn't know what they were, at some point you have probably seen water striders skating along the surfaces of calm ponds, lakes, or rivers. These hemipteran insects skate across the water's surface with the aid of long legs and hydrophobic, or water-repellent, hairs on their tarsi. These hairs are tightly packed together so that air is trapped where they contact the water. This prevents the legs from breaking the surface tension of the water and increases the buoyancy of the insect. This approach is effective, as water strider legs can support up to 15 times the insect's weight while staying afloat. Water striders use their mid legs to row and their hind legs to steer, and can travel at speeds of 100 body lengths per second, the equivalent of a 1.8 meter tall human swimming at 644 kilometers per hour. Not even Michael Phelps can beat that. Jet propulsion isn't just for James Bond's spy gadgets. It's also another way of moving in water, and dragonfly nymphs use it to great effect. Dragonfly nymphs have a rectal chamber at the end of their abdomen that is lined with gills and is primarily used for gas exchange. But when needed, the nymphs can use this chamber as a thrust-producing mechanism. When the nymphs rapidly squeeze water out of this chamber, enough force is produced to propel them forwards, giving them a short burst of speed. Jet propulsion is not unique to nymphal dragonflies. Other aquatic animals, like squid and octopuses, also use this method of locomotion. While we are on the topic of swimming, let's take a look at mosquito pupae, who also have an odd way of getting around. Rather than undulating their bodies as the larvae do in aquatic environments, mosquito pupae somersault head over tail, tumbling downwards to the safety of the sediment when disturbed. However, these pupae can't stay submerged indefinitely and will eventually float back to the water surface to breathe. Because of this locomotory movement, mosquito pupae are sometimes referred to as tumblers. As you can see from these examples, Many aquatic insects have strange and interesting ways of getting around. As a last example, we present shoreline-inhabiting rove beetles in the genus Stennis. Like many insects, if rove beetles should fall into a pool of water, they can float and paddle to the surface. However, floating and paddling is not an effective way to escape predators that might be lurking underneath the water. In order to escape quickly, these beetles employ a technique called Marangoni propulsion. To make their escape, the beetles produce a hydrophobic chemical mixture that is excreted through their anuses. This chemical mixture lowers the surface tension of the water behind the beetle, which has the effect of propelling them forward. To help visualize this, we have pepper floating on the surface of a bowl of water. When a drop of soap is added to the middle of the bowl, it reduces the surface tension and quickly forms a thin layer, pushing the pepper to the edge of the bowl. This is the same principle that enables stennis beetles to move up to 10 times faster than they would without marangoni propulsion. Jumping as a form of locomotion has evolved in many terrestrial insect groups, such as the grasshoppers and fleas. However, did you know that the best jumpers are not fleas, as you might assume, but actually hemipteran insects like tree hoppers and frog hoppers? Tree hoppers and frog hoppers are incredible jumpers and can claim some pretty impressive feats. In under one millisecond, they can achieve a takeoff velocity of about five meters per second. When they jump, these insects experience acceleration greater than 500 times that of gravity. 
Some tree hoppers and frog hoppers achieve this with a catapult mechanism, in which the force of, for the jump is generated by huge thoracic muscles and stored in elastic structures within the thorax. When the insect jumps, the elastic structures release the stored energy through the hind legs at a faster rate than a muscle would be able to contract. It is this mechanism that provides both the speed and the power by which these incredibly tiny organisms can jump. Some terrestrial insects don't run, walk, or jump, but roll instead. You may have thought that the idea of the wheel was conceived in the minds of our ancestors during the Stone Age, but insects beat us to the punch long before that. They have been wheeling around for millions of years. In order to avoid predation, some caterpillars, like those in the genus Crambidae, propel themselves down a slope by curling their bodies up into wheels with the dorsal surface of their bodies in contact with the ground. This lets them roll away to safety. This kind of rolling behavior occurs in the wheel spiders that live in the Sahara Desert, although in this case the spider rolls with its legs, not its body, in contact with the ground. While passive dispersal is energy efficient, it is not very dependable. There's just no way of knowing where you're going to end up. Most insects employ active dispersal, and their ability to do this depends on their locomotory appendages and strong muscles. In the next video, we will learn how insect muscles enable both powerful and complex movements.